In today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own frequency generator. Here is a list of the materials that we'll be using. A 555 timer chip, 1 kilo ohm resistor, a 4.7 microfarad capacitor, a 0.01 microfarad capacitor, and some potentiometers. Here's the schematic we'll be following. First, let's go ahead and breadboard out the circuit. Let's begin by placing the 555 timer chip in the center pillar so that each of the pins have their own rows. Now that we have that chip put in, go ahead and attach pin 1 to your ground rail. Now we're going to go ahead and attach pin 2 to pin 6. Pin 3 is going to be our output pin, so we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now let's go ahead and attach pin 4 to pin 8. Let's go ahead and put a cable between pin 5 and this rail down here. Now let's go ahead and take that 0.01 microfarad capacitor and let's put it between the ground rail and pin 5. Let's take another wire and go ahead and bring pin 6 down to this rail down here. Now let's go ahead and take that electrolytic capacitor. Let's place that capacitor between pin 6 and the negative rail. Be sure the negative side of the capacitor is going into the negative rail. Now let's take another wire to extend the sixth pin down here. Let's go ahead and take two of these 500,000 ohm potentiometers. Let's put them in series from pin 6 to pin 7. Remember that these potentiometers need to be center tapped. So place it on the center pin, bring it over, and let's insert the next potentiometer right here next to it. Now let's go ahead and attach this potentiometer going up to pin 7. Now let's go ahead and take a 1000 ohm and let's put that resistor between pin 7 and the positive rail over here. Now let's go ahead and wire pin 3 to an open rail down here. When testing the output, I find it easiest to use LEDs to be able to see if they're blinking on and off. That way you'll know it's working. So let's go ahead and put a couple of LEDs in here. Remember, after connecting up your signal, the end of it has to be going back to the same common ground. Now let's go ahead and put in a pin for the positive and negative rail. And with alligator clips, I'm going to connect this up to my 9 volt battery. As you can see, the LEDs are blinking. If you'd like, you can have a smaller potentiometer right here. By the way, this is the 500,000 ohm one. This is a 20,000 ohm potentiometer. You're going to want the 20,000 ohm potentiometer set around 15,000 ohms, and you're going to want to leave it that way. And as for the 500,000 ohm potentiometer, that's going to be the one you turn to adjust your frequency. If you want to be more precise, you can use a smaller value potentiometer. You just won't be able to get as high frequencies. Or I guess you could also use a more precise potentiometer. I'm going to be using this speaker I took out of a TV. I connected alligator clips to each of these tabs. And on the end of the alligator clips, I connected jumper wires. So now let's go ahead and connect one of these jumper wires to where we had pin 3. And we're just going to connect the other jumper wire to the common ground. Now let's connect it up and see what we get. As you can see, while twisting the 500 kilo ohm potentiometer, I'm able to sweep through different frequencies. As you can see using our oscilloscope we made in the previous video, it gives us a pretty good wave. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see in the future, feel free to leave a comment below. If you'd like to see more of our weekly videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below so they show up in your newsfeed. And have a wonderful day.